not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. First we grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of his suffering, and also share in his resurrection, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Be seated for the lessons. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. 
Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Jesus for us. So 
So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release for you? Jesus the Ross, or Jesus, who is called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for the robbers to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, and what should I do with Jesus, who is called Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. And he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after applauding Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. And the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters. They gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took took the reed and struck him on his head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put on his clothes on and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene called Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. When he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among them by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by divided him, shaking their heads, saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priest also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he did not save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now. If he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Nimi, Sebastian. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders could have heard him, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. And once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, 
put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And after the resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion opposed with him, who was also keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man is God's son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. seated. The answer is love. And love is going to be the answer often enough in this sermon that I want some help with it. Okay? It's going to be a refrain. And if I say the answer is, please join me in the word love. Okay? Let's try that. The answer is love. Excellent. Thank you. We have a first reading from Philippians, which introduces a beautiful hymn from the early church, and it tells us of something that would be hard to believe if we hadn't grown up our whole lives knowing it, and that is that the Holy Trinity who made everything that is from wildebeest to goldfish did not stand back as a righteous judge when we fell short of the glory of God, but chose to enter into the creation and weave it back together from the inside. Why would God do that? The answer is love. love. That's right. And what we're told in this hymn is that God humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, and the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ. Jesus entering into creation, and once you do that, well, humans are going to do what humans do. And if you treat people who others want to dismiss or not see, that can get you killed. If you go against the way things are, it can come at a cost. And what we find is that God in Jesus Christ never gives up on that, even when the cost is death. Why would God do that? The answer is love. That's right. And so we come today to, to a reading. Um, sometimes we do it much longer and in parts. But today, with all that's going on, we ask Deacon Mithin to read this very long passage that takes us to the heart of the gospel and really the beginning of the hinge of human history when we see that no matter what the cost is, Jesus will pay the cost. Now, when asked to sum up all of the law and all of the prophets, everything that was to be taught, Jesus said the answer is, love, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is everything. Love God. Love your neighbor while you're at it. Love yourself. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Doing for them really what um, looking out for others, more concerned for them than for yourself. That's the type of love that Jesus had. Now, uh, y'all are good uh, followers of Jesus. You've been in church a few times, and you know that we uh, like to use the Greek word agape for that. It's a word that means that self-giving love of God. Not romantic love, not brotherly love, not friendship love, but the love that God has for us. And that love is actually, in Scripture, 
a choice, a decision, an act of will, and we see that on the cross. I don't imagine Jesus feeling very emotionally lovey in this scene. That's not what's happening. But when the option is to continue loving all creation and the cost is death, or to come down from the cross and thereby save himself but not us, Jesus remains on the cross. And when people ask, why would he do that? The answer is love. Love Love, a choice, a decision, an act of will. Not that we say, I feel loving toward you, but I am deciding to love you. That I care more about that love and about you. And and then that is the love that we are called to. When we get to, uh, for example, the sacrament of marriage, um, it's common in movies to say, I do. My mom used to be a uh, wedding coordinator and she would say, I do is easy. We say the words, I will, that's harder. Uh, I do is, I do love you today in the midst of this ceremony in this beautiful church. I will is, I am going to decide to love you every morning and every evening for the rest of our lives. And that sort of love is the love that we are to have for each other, not just a feeling, not just an emotion, but a decision to care for that other person as God would have us to care for. Well, why would we do something like that? The answer is the love that we have of God and Jesus Christ, the love that we have experienced that when we did not deserve it, God loved us. The gospel is not if I get my act together long enough, God might love me. The gospel is in while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If God had waited for me and you to get our act together in order to love us, still waiting. (laughs) Instead, God enters into the creation. God shows love for us. God looks out for the people that others are looking over. A woman from Samaria at the middle of the day, 10 lepers who are crying out, saying unclean in the road. A woman caught in the very act of adultery as if that happened all by herself. All these people again and again who others are looking at and judging or not looking at at all. Jesus looks at them and loves them, and that's good news because we're not always lovable either. And on our worst day, God loves us. God gave himself for us. We find that how far God is willing to go that in his humanity, Jesus cries out with words from the cross that are so unbelievable, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And yet, even as I feel this in my humanity, I am not coming down from this cross. And then we see the redemption of everything when God looks at that sin and that death and gives life. But I'm getting ahead of myself. That's next week. This week, we have a baptism. And um, uh, we are not baptizing Maisie because she thinks got, we, she's gotten off track in her life and needs to get back on track. We are baptizing Maisie a new life in Jesus Christ our Lord because we want her to grow up in this corner of the vineyard, which is right here, knowing the grace, mercy, and love of God so that she knows nothing else. All of us grow up in a world turned from God where, that, where everybody looks at us and can see us as less than at times. Middle school, high school, how does anybody get through it, right? And yet God sees us, knows us, sees how we fall short, and loves us. And today, um, with, together with Maisie and together with those who are being confirmed and received and reaffirming their faith, we're going to make some promises to in word and example, show the good news of God and Christ. We're going to say that we're going to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbor as ourself. And we're going to say that we're going to respect the dignity of every human being. People will say, why would you live like that? Well, the answer is love. We have been shown so much love, so much grace and mercy, that what we want to do is reach out to others with that same love. So in a little bit, when we all stand and reaffirm our faith, we're going to talk about the sort of life we want to live, and that is the life of love. Amen. We're uh, moving toward the baptism and confirmations.
be on page 301 of the Book of Common Prayer. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Moving to the top of the next page. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will with God's help. Will you by your prayers and witness help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept Him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in His grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey Him as your Lord? I do. The other candidates will now be presented. Bishop Logue, I present to you Mallory Bell and Susan Band to be received. I present to you Mark Blackmore, Ann Dickinson, and Eric Clevin to be reaffirmed. I present to you Amy Ariel, Ella Briones, Evie Briones, George Graham, Morgan Hires, Danielle Clevin, Joshua Long, and Gail McFadden to be confirmed. Okay. The question is now for those of you who are to be concerned, confirmed, received, and reaffirming your faith. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do, and with God's grace, I will follow Him as my Savior and Lord. Now the question is for the whole congregation gathered. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Amen. Let us all stand and join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by the believe in God the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, Amen. repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let's now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth and for those who are renewing their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O oh Lord, that all who are baptized in the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection. Look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. 
and also you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give them thanks to praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water over it. The Holy Spirit hovered in the beginning of creation through it. He led the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed as the, by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism in it. We are buried with Christ in his death by it. We share in his resurrection through it. We are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are cleansed here from sin and born again may continue forever in the new life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Hey, everybody can be seated except for the baptismal party. Maisie, we're going to get your bench right here. Maisie Geraldine, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Maisie, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you bestowed upon Maisie the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, the spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim His resurrection and share with us in His eternal priesthood. Amen. Okay. Y'all can be seated. Now we have the others to stand. Okay. For those of y'all to be concerned, confirmed, received, and reaffirmed. Before you go up, let's now pray for these persons who've renewed their commitment to Christ. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Amy with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Strengthen, O oh Lord, your servant Ella with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Evie with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen.
Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Morgan with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Joshua with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Susan, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church and receive you into the fellowship of this community. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Did you want to stand? Strengthen our Lord, your servant Gail, with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant George with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Mark, may the Holy Spirit who has begun a good work in you direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and His kingdom. Amen. Thank you. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Danielle with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Eric, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and His kingdom. Amen. Mallory, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church and receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these, your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them and lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another in peace. be seated. The announcements are here somewhere. Good morning, everyone. There is a wonderful reception following the service for all those who have been baptized, confirmed, reaffirmed, and received. So I encourage you to go to the parish hall, uh, maybe go on out into the courtyard since our air conditioner decided to make a special, um, a special move toward Holy Week and, and do the death and resurrection thing a little early. Um, 
So feel free to take some food and go outside if need be. But um, a wonderful reception. Thank you to all the volunteers who helped put that on. And, and thank you particularly for Susan and, and Maddie who helped with the youth confirmation class and all you confirmands. And um, we give thanks for you today for your place in this community. And we want to celebrate that. As, as in this liturgy and Palm Sunday, we have moved into Holy Week. Um, you've seen in the, in the weekly newsletter all the services. There'll be another, it's also in your leaflet, there'll be another email that goes out this week uh, reminding you about the services. I do encourage you to attend those. After, as we prepare for Holy Week and at the reception, Beth, Beth Price will be organizing those who are going to bring down the labyrinth. So if you can help bring down the labyrinth, the labyrinth will be out for most of the services throughout Holy Week. So I encourage you to see Beth at the reception. She's looking for volunteers to help with that ministry. Finally today, um, again, we, we give thanks for Bishop Logue's presence among us. I hope you see him and talk to him in the parish hall. But with his presence, the loose offering today goes to his discretionary fund. Uh, the loose offering goes to the Bishop's discretionary fund. So I encourage you to give and to give generously. Bishop Logue. And how to be with y'all today. Um, it is uh, unusual to spend Palm Sunday with the church, but it seemed a really meaningful way to mark baptisms, confirmations, and receptions. It is really a once in an epis episcopacy joy for a congregation. So if you like the way it usually goes, you get that next year. If you like this, then I'm glad we were able to do this together this year. But it is it's really great to be back with y'all. I just so appreciate uh, this congregation, the work y'all have been doing together. Thank you, Wallace, for your hard work, Mark and Ann, for supporting them in that family. Uh, look forward to seeing y'all in the parish hall. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
the Lord our God. It is right, a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sins was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. By his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we pray as you join our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had 